All right, I've got a quiz where the user can kind of, you know, flip through the pictures and questions, but there's no way to answer right now. So I'm going to add some user interface elements to make, make that, that possible. And the first thing I'm going to do is grab a horizontal arrangement. And this is where we're going to kind of put their answer and, a, and an answer button. I'm going to put this guy right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick the next button in there. And I'm also going to grab another button, which is going to be what the user will click when they're ready to answer. All right. And I'm going to put some text in that called answer. Okay. And, and I'm going to rename the component the answer button so I can distinguish it when I get back over to the code side. All right. And then, of course, I need a text box. You know, we're, we're going to start off where they just enter the answer in a text box and they're going to have to get it, you know, almost exactly right. So it's not perfect, but we'll, we'll start off that way. And I'm going to call this text box my answer text box. Okay, and notice the uh, horizontal arrangement's nice because it makes everything show up in a, in a nice row. For my text box, I'm going to add a hint. This is kind of your instructions for the user. And what I'm going to say is enter an answer, um, last name only. Okay, so they're going to have to answer Roosevelt, Nixon, uh, or uh, Carter, and, and last name only. Okay, so that's how they're going to answer. We're going to need to somehow tell them whether they're right or wrong. So I'm going to add another label just uh, for the kind of to tell the user whether they're right or wrong. All right, and I'm going to call this label the uh, correct label. Okay. So this is labeled where we'll, we'll tell them whether they're correct or not. And right now, I'll just put in blank. So you're, it's going to kind of not show up. You'll see this little green guy. But that label's there. We can put stuff there um, when we actually start start the app. But we don't want anything to appear until they actually actually answer. OK, so we've got this UI set up. Now let's go ahead and code the, code the behavior. OK, I'm going to go to the blocks here. And we kind of need to clean clean this up or give us give, give ourselves some room. So let's just assume that this next button is okay. So I'm going to collapse it, kind of move it out of the way here. Same with screen initialize. Okay, I'm going to collapse it. All right, so we've got that stuff out of the way. Now, let's see if we can tell the user whether they're right or wrong when they answer. So first thing is grab the answer button dot click. All right, so the idea is they are going to enter some text in the text box and then click on answer. And when they do, we need to tell them right or wrong. Okay, so when they click, I want to ask a question. So I'm going to grab another if statement. All right, I'm going to bring this in. I'm going to click on the modifier and put an else clause in it because we, we want to do one thing or the other. Okay, and what we want to know is, is their answer correct? Okay, well, their answer is going to be in this answer text box. So one thing I need to do is grab a reference to answer text box dot dot text. Oh, sorry, wrong scroll bar, right? So I need to grab this reference here. Let's scroll our code back up. So I want to know if this guy is equal to the current answer we're on. So number one, we don't have the data for our answer set up. So let's kind of give ourselves a little more room. We're going to have to add a third list. We've got this question list. But we need a third list. I'm going to copy this whole guy. Notice App Inventor put in question list two, but what I'm going to call this is the answer list. All right, and then I'm going to just get rid of this text and put the actual answers. Let's see if I can spell Roosevelt right. Okay, uh, Roosevelt. Yeah, I think that's right. Uh, second, I need to put for the second answer is going to be Carter. I know Nixon dealt with China a lot, but Carter was the one that did that in 1979, and the third answer is Nixon. So kind of, once again, I have this hidden variable, this answer list that holds my three answers. Okay, so they're going to be clicking next. They're going to be on one, two, or three question. We've got this index variable, which holds the value, which is either one, two, or three, depending on what question they're on. So what I want to do is compare their answer to the current question, all right? And what that's going to be is I'm going to need another select list item. All right, so I'm going to grab a select list item. And what I want to do is I want to select from the uh, answer list. 
and I want to grab the indexed item from the answer list. So I'll grab a reference to index. All right. So what I'm saying is I want to know if the indexed item, so the answer that relates to which question we're on, I want to know if it's the same as what they typed in. All right, so I'm going to type in equals and get an equals block, and let's put that in. All right, so if you can think of this block as the current question, we're going to compare it with what they typed, and then we'll tell the user whether they were right or, right or wrong. So the correct label just needs to be set, and I'm going to grab this guy, and let's see, let's grab a text block. Put a little message to the user. All right, and then in the other block, we need to tell them they were, that they were wrong. And I just need to change that text, so incorrect. Sorry. All right, let's try this. Let's try this out. So I'm on the first question, and I'm on my phone, and I'm going to type in Roosevelt, and I'm actually going to do it exactly as we put it in. So there's Roosevelt. I'm going to click on Answer, and great, you're awesome. It gave me the right thing. Notice I could answer again, and take, put some other stuff in there, and click answer and incorrect sorry okay so I, I think this code is is kind of working for us. so let's make sure it works on the second question so if I go to the second question and notice we need to do a little cleanup which we haven't done but let's see if I type in Carter here okay click answer oh it's incorrect you know why that's incorrect well notice the answer we're looking for is capital C A R T so it is case sensitive. So I think if I do go back here and use the right case on the C, I think I'll get the right response. Okay, good, cool. So it's working, but you know, the user has to get the exact right right answer. Okay. And you know, so let's leave it exact, but you know, I want to show you one thing. You can you can actually uppercase or lowercase uh, items. So if you go to the text block. There's a couple of nice things like upcase, all right? And what we can do is just uppercase both of the, the things we're checking against. So I'm going to just grab this guy. This block's going to get a little hairy. But I want to compare the uppercase of what I've selected. Oh, whoops, sorry. I'm doing this a little bit wrong. I want to uppercase uh, this thing I've selected, okay? All right, so I'm going to select an item from my answer list, but I want to get the all caps version of it, okay? And then I want to compare that versus the uppercase of my answer text box. Whoops, sorry, I didn't need to copy all that stuff. Okay, so I want to grab this answer text box dot text, take it out of there, and I want to uppercase that. Okay, so basically, whatever they type, I'm going to uppercase. And I'm going to uppercase my answer I had in here. And that way, there's no way that there will be case issues, right? So I'm going to stick that back in. OK. And now I think even if I type in the wrong case, I should get the right answer. So let's type in lowercase c-a-r-t-e-r. -E click on answer. And yeah, got it, got it right. OK. So this uppercase is a nice block, if, especially if you're kind of checking the answers for, for the user. All right, so you know this this app is is pretty important. You learn a bunch of stuff. You learn about lists, which are these hidden variables that are kind of multi-item, right? So you've got these list variables, and then you also learn about kind of how to get indexed through a list, right? So I've got this next button, and it's you know very common behavior, right? But you know knowing how to do this in code is just a fundamental thing in in computer science. So you know, we keep the track of this variable which holds a number, all right, and that number gets changed by one every time. So this is called incrementing, okay, and you need to know how to code that. 
and then you know essentially we we check to make sure that we're not too far in the list if we are we go back to one or we could just stop the user and then we kind of grab each item and stick it into our user interface components okay very fundamental piece of code and you know it's something you should study carefully and make sure make sure you understand it